السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده رسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد today inshallah as we finished kitab tahara the book of sorry the fiqh of tahara to be more specific the understanding of tahara we will continue on today with the book of heart softness kitab al-riqaq from sahih al-bukhari so if you have your book sahih al-bukhari you go to the book of heart softness which is book number 81 and we are in chapter 15 in the book of heart softness if you don't have your book i'm sure you have a phone which has internet data you go to the website i will put on the live chat if you're on youtube otherwise if you're not on youtube right now you go to the website sunnah.com you click on sahih al-bukhari and you go to book number 81, the book of heart softness. And then in there, we go to chapter number 15. Chapter number 15, in the book of heart softness in Sahih al-Bukhari, it says, Babu chapter, Al-Ghina, Ghina nafs being rich is being rich in the heart al ghina the definition of richness or wealthy how are you considered rich or wealthy ghina nafs is to be so in your heart and the word ghina which means richness in arabic it also means being content being content, which means being satisfied. Being content or satisfied. That is the linguistic definition of the word also, but it is also used to mean being rich. So that is the relation of the word between these two concepts. Imam al-Bukhari, he started the book, or the, sorry, the chapter with the verses in the, from the Quran. He says, Abu Ghina Ghina Nafs, true richness. The definition of being rich is being rich in the heart. He says, ta'ala, and the statement of Allah the Exalted. Verses which are in Surah 2. Huh? أَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّ مَا نُمِدُّهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ مَالٍ وَبَنِينَ نُسَارِعُ لَهُمْ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ بَلْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ هُمْ مِنْ خَشَّةِ رَبِّهِمْ مُشْفِقُونَ What surah is that? Anbiya, Mu'minun. Huh? Surah Al-Mu'minun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do they consider or do they think that what we give them of the wealth and so many children that this is good that we give them rather they don't understand rather they don't understand Allah says in the Quran those who disbelieve in Allah and Allah has given them so much wealth children you know health do they think that we're just giving them so much good rather they don't understand that that is not true happiness that is not true richness ibn Uyayna, he says ibn Uyayna said Lam yamaluha, la bud min an yamaluha. imam al-bukhari the first hadith he brought under this chapter he says haddathana ahmad ibn yunus حدثنا أبو بكر حدثنا أبو حسين عن أبي صالح عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أبو هريرة ريبوست الدبروفي صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد ليس الغنى 
عن كثرة العرب ولكن الغنى غنى النفس The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said ليس الغنى عن كثرة العرب Reaching Riches Sorry Or being rich Or being wealthy Does not mean having a great amount of property Or things Out of these things actually Being rich does not mean having a lot of things What we say material things وَلَكِنَّ الْغِنَى رَذَى What is the definition of being rich? غِنَى النَّفْس Is self-contentment Being contented in your soul That is true richness Now, if you have been reading this book with us كتاب الرقاق The book of heart softness We went through like we said, now we're in chapter number 15. The chapters we went through, the Prophet ﷺ defined, you know, what it means to be happy. The Prophet defined that already. Now we understand this. Because someone can have a lot of things. That means real estate, houses, cars, a lot of things. Yet, he is not happy. And we saw that the nature of the human being is what? لو كان لابن آدم وادي من ذهب If the son of Adam, if the human being had a value of gold What does the Prophet sallallahu say? لا حب له أن يكون له ثانيا He would love to have another value of gold And if he had two, he would love to have a third one ولا يملأ جوف ابن آدم إلا التراب The only thing which, which you'll feel the belly of a human being is the dot when he is buried. وَيَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَنْ تَابِ And Allah forgives those who repent. That is the nature of us human beings. We love to have more and more and more and more. But that does not mean you are happy. So that is not the definition of being rich. The definition of being rich is having what is enough for you. Because then you are satisfied in your soul. And remember we quoted, we said some of the Salaf, they said what? Let your wealth beware. Let your wealth be in your hands, not in your heart. Wealth, let it be in your hands. So it's easy for you to give, easy for you to use. Don't let wealth be in your heart, so you love it so much. True richness it's not the one who has a billion dollars, you know, the billionaire list. It is good. Again, nobody should misunderstand and say, oh, Islam says we should not be rich. No. I think we've said this over and over again. But have what is enough for you. Let it be in your heart. You say, you know what? This is enough, alhamdulillah. If I get more, yes. And like we went through those other chapters, the Prophet he said what? There's two kinds of people. It's like the cow who sees beautiful green vegetation next to the riverbed. And he goes and eats and eats and eats until his stomach busts open. While the other one he does what? He goes and eats until he is full. Then he goes to the sun and let it digest and he just looks at the sun. When it's digested, it passes through, he goes back and eats again. That is how the human being is supposed to be, the true Muslim. Our relation to the riches and the wealth of this world. You have enough? I have enough to worship my Lord. I don't want need a distraction. Or you get enough, you spend it in good. You spend it in good. That's what the Prophet he said, what? How beautiful is wealth? Only for the one who does what? The one who does like this in the right side. In his front, his left side, and his behind. Meaning he just gives all directions. How beautiful is worth like that. Otherwise, if you don't spend it like that for the sake of Allah, you don't help people, then it's not yours. You're going to die soon, you're leaving it for others. What is yours is what you give, what you spend for Allah. So, the concept is richness in Islam. 
is not by having a lot. Because you might have a lot. You know, in, in English, they have a very good way of putting it. They say what? You have a lot, but inside you are empty. You have heard that, right? I say inside he is empty. Inside you are empty, even though he has everything other people would wish for. He has everything other people would wish for, but inside he is empty, stressed. He's never happy. He's never happy. Why? Because he has a wrong concept of richness. Being rich is being satisfied, being content with what Allah has given you. You do what you have to do, you put all your effort. What you get, you say, Alhamdulillah, this is what Allah gave me. That's why from the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it's going to come. He used to say, Allahumma ja'al rizqa ali Muhammad kafafa. Oh Allah, make the rizq, the provision of the family of Muhammad, what is sufficient. We don't have to beg people, and at the same time, not wealth which distracts us from the main goal. What is the main goal? Trying to build for the akhirah tomorrow, to go to Jannah to be saved from the fire. So, in the Malghina, as in the other narration, Ghina Nafs, richness, the definition of it is being self content inside, in your soul. After Imam al Bukhari brought this chapter, he brought the next chapter <coughs> saying, Babu Fadlul Fakri, chapter on the excellence or the superiority. Of being poor chapter on the excellence or the superiority of being poor he says حدثنا اسماعيل قال حدثني عبد العزيز بن ابي حازم عن ابيه ان سهل بن سعد الساعدي انه this hadith is from sahl he says مر رجل على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. A man passed by Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. فقال لرجل عنده جالس. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to a man who was sitting with him, ما رأيك في هذا? What do you say about him? What do you think of him? فقال So the man answered, رجل من أشراف الناس. He is a man from the noble people. هذا والله this one by Allah حري إن خطب أن ينكح it is befitting for him it's going to be if he goes to propose they'll they'll get him married وإن شفع أن يشفع and if he goes to intercede for someone to speak for someone they'll accept his words قال سهل says فسكت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم kept quiet ثم مر رجل and then another man passed by. فقال له رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to the man who was sitting with him, ما رأيك في هذا? What do you say about him? This one who's passing now. فقال so the Sahabi answered saying, يا رسول الله أو مسجد الله هذا رجل. This is a man من فقراء المسلمين from the poor Muslims. هذا حري إن خطب أن لا ينكح. This one. His chances, if he goes to propose anywhere, they won't get him married to their daughter. وَإِنْ شَفَعَ أَلَّا يُشَفَعَ And if he goes to intercede, to speak for someone, they won't listen to him. وَإِنْ قَالَ And if he speaks, in fact, لا يسمع, nobody takes his words. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَلَّمْ So the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَلَّمْ said, هذا, this second one, Khayrun, he is better. Min mil il ardi than an earth full. Mithlahada than the first one. Chapter The Excellence of Being Poor. Meaning, do not take it as if it's a curse if you're not rich. Some people view it like that. No. Allah says in the Quran,
dari Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yabsatul rizqa liman yasha'u wa yaqdir he expands and gives those he wants riches and for others he makes life difficult for them all of it is a test this one is being tested by riches this one is being tested by being poor so this hadith is reported by Sahal ibn Sa'ad he says one day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting with one of his companions or with others also and a man passes by so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to the one who is sitting with what do you think of him the one who's passing by tell me about him what do you think of him and the Sahaba he says what that is from the noble people I mean Ashraf in Nas this one if he goes to propose anywhere they'll get him married and if he speaks people will listen what did the Prophet sallallahu say nothing he kept quiet they were sitting and then another one passed by and he says to him what do you say about this one and he says other oh messenger of Allah he is from the poor Muslims if he goes to propose anywhere his chances they won't accept if he speaks nobody listens so the Prophet Sallallahu now he spoke correcting their understanding and our understanding these are life lessons Ikhwani. life lessons how we are supposed to live our daily lives all of us as humans were judgmental you see something you see someone you judge him by how they dress how they talk how they speak uh, how they walk whatever they do there's an image which comes to you the Prophet وسلم, this is what he's he's seeing it's how humans are but he is correcting now this understanding just like he corrected the understanding of what that being rich is not having things being rich is inside here he says this one the second one who you say he is poor if he speaks nobody listens in front of Allah he is better than an earth fool of the first one who you say is from the noble people the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pay attention eh? he didn't say this one is better than that one no this one he is better than two of those ones no three of them a million no if you took the earth and filled them with human beings right now we are seven billion people right seven billion people on earth and we just occupy less than five percent of earth by the way if you fill the earth how many billions is it going to be let's say you turn the oceans into dry land or people live on the oceans also how many people you think the earth can 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 hold it's difficult to say okay so let's just keep the seven billion who exist today this one is better than seven billion of those ones in front of Allah do you understand you understand the hadith the judgment of human beings don't let it bother you don't let the judgment of human beings bother you we should be focused in what the judgment of Allah where do I stand with Allah I'm trying to be a good Muslim I'm doing my best that's what you should be worried about not what Fulan says about you not what Amr or Zaid or Khadij or Fatima says about you don't worry about that don't worry about that and this by the way happened not just once there's another hadith which is another event it's the hadith of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas anhu. it happened with him also and that hadith it was different a bit but the same lesson the Prophet Sallallahu was teaching the same lesson Sa'ad Sa sorry uh, Sa'ad he says I was sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu one day and then he told me Sa'ad get up and look at the man who's inside the masjid they were sitting outside what do you say about him he says so I got up and I looked over the wall 
And I saw someone who's noble. Same answer. He says, oh, Messenger of Allah, I see someone who's noble. He has a position in our society. You know, if he goes to propose, if he knocks on any door, they'll open. He says, so he didn't say anything to me. We sat, and then he said to me, Sa Sa'ad, get up and look at, over the wall. Who's there now? He says, so he got up and he looked and I saw someone else. And the Prophet وسلم, said to me, what do you think of him? I said, oh, Messenger of Allah, he's from the poor Muhajirun, from the poor ones. If he goes to propose, nobody will accept. If he speaks, nobody speaks to him. Meaning nobody listens to his words. And the Prophet وسلم, said, same words. In front of Allah, he is better than an half full of those ones. So, the major lesson here is what? Don't worry about people. Many of us, we live our lives, we are sad, you know, we are stressed. Why? Because we're just worrying about people's judgment on us. We forget the goal, the purpose of life. What is the purpose of life? To worship Allah, to please Allah. Anything else is secondary. Someone might ask, what about the people who are supposed to please? Like my mother, like my siblings, if you're married, your spouse. Should I be worried about them? That they like me or not? The answer is yes, but not because of them. Because why do you do good to your mother? Why do you do good to your spouse or your children? Why do you take care of them and love them? Why? Because Allah told you, this is one of your duties. So at the end of the day, your goal is to please Allah. Lesson number two. Don't look down on anybody. Especially because of their status or because they're not rich. Or because nobody knows them in society. No. In front of Allah, they could be a billion times better than you. They could be a billion times better than you. That is why kibr, arrogance, and looking down on others is one of the most major sins in Islam. And one of the famous salaf, one of the famous pious Muslims who came before us, he put it in the best way. The Muslim is supposed to be a person of tawadu, being humble. You know, not to look down on people. No, you're supposed to put yourself down. He put it best. I forgot his name, but he put it best. He said, you know what is tawadu? To show that you don't have kibr, arrogance in your heart. He said that, make sure every day you step out of your house. house when you see any Muslim, you should say in your heart, he is better than me. Make sure you don't see any Muslim except that you say, maybe in front of Allah, he's better than me. I have no reason to look down on him. I'm worse than him. He's a better Muslim. Then you know you're someone of Tawadu. You're humble. These are life lessons, Ikhwan. This is how we're supposed to live our lives. So, third lesson from this, success is not by wealth. Success is not by position. This other one, people don't value him. People don't value him, yet in front of Allah, he's better than an earth fool. He's better than seven billion of those ones, Allahu Akbar. So again, don't look at yourself and say, you know, Oh, I didn't do this yet. I didn't achieve that yet. I don't have this. No. If you have Allah, you worship Allah, that is success. And if we are to do that, Allah will give us the beauty of this dunya and the akhirah. And that is the dua of the believers. Or the believers say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Oh Allah, give us in this dunya good. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا And in the here after good. So our concern should be what? 
me, my goal, my concern is to please Allah. That is the concern. And we have to train ourselves to do this. We have to remind ourselves every day. And the best way is always to be reading the Quran. Read the Quran, not just reciting the Quran. If you don't understand the Arabic, take a translation and read. Know what Allah is saying to you. Because this is what Allah is saying to us in every surah of the Quran. Let your concern be me, Allah says. Don't worry about the people. That is why you see those slaves of Allah. It's time for salah, it doesn't matter. I, my priority is salah. I'm in the airport, I'm in the hospital, I'm traveling. I'm, I have to pray, I have to pray. If you're going to look at me, you're going to say I'm weird, what not, that's your problem. I have to pray. Their concern is Allah. They see someone who needs help, they go and help him. They go and help him. Tell him we'll pray at 8 o'clock. They don't worry. Oh, someone will see that I'm helping this poor person, you know. Me, I'm someone of position. I cannot walk with this person. He is poor and homeless. No. Their concern is Allah. And if you look at the seer of the Prophet ﷺ, you see just that. We read the hadith in Kitab al-Ilm, the book of knowledge before this one. Huh? Someone would come who he doesn't know the Prophet ﷺ when he was sitting with his companion وسلم, the greatest human being. Nobody, if you don't know him, you won't pick him out. The greatest human being. He didn't used to wear fancy clothes with jewelry and bodyguards. No. He said just like every other person. If you came, you didn't know him, they used to ask, who amongst you is Muhammad? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tawadu, being humble. Because the goal is not the cloth, no. The goal is to please Allah. And that is the hadith we read two chapters behind. Two chapters behind. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what? If I had a, a mountain of gold, like the mountain of Uhud, if I had gold like the mountain of Uhud, I would not love to spend three days without giving it out. That is how he was thinking, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is how they used to think. So when you hear next, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, sometimes he'll be in a state of janaba, he'll just wash his cloth, Right away and go pray when there's still there's marks and traces of water on his cloth. He didn't worry about that. He has to go pray, he has to go pray. When you hear that Abu Bakr anhu, when he was made the Khalif after the Prophet وسلم, died, first day he is back in the souq, in the marketplace, selling things. And they said, you are the Khalifa, you are the leader of all the Muslims. What are you doing here? And he said, Rajulun lahu iyal. I'm a man who has a family to feed. He didn't say, I'm the Khalifa. I need to bring me a chair. Let me sit. No. I have a family to feed. I have to work for them. And Umar said, no, you cannot do that. So from today, we'll give you from the Baytul Mal, from the state treasury. The government, the Islamic government, it will pay you. You, had, you cannot work. When you hear that Umar and Uthman, عنهم, when they used to stand on the member on Friday, and they could count eight patches on their thumb, eight. And that is the man who's the leader from China all the way to, you know, North Africa. Yet he's wearing a cloth with patches. It was not to show off, you know, there's some people today, they call themselves Sufis. They do that to show off, to show, oh, you know, I, I'm not into the world. No, they, the Sahaba, عنه, it was normal for them. They didn't worry or care or pay attention to these things. It was just normal. You don't, you don't focus on that. You have bigger things to do. How am I going to pray my Salah today? 
who from the sick people I'm going to visit today? How many orphans and widows I'm going to support today? You know? Am I going to follow Janaza today and remember death? Who am I going to give charity to today? That's what they used to think about. You know? Am I going to do my dhikr today? Am I going to read Quran? A person who's focused on that doesn't have time to sit and say, you know, oh, look at his clothes. Do you understand the concept? This is the concept. This is how the believer is supposed to be. So tomorrow when he wears very nice clothes also, that is when they would notice and they will say, oh, mashallah, oh, messenger of Allah. This is a nice cloth you put on. It's the opposite. For us, it's the opposite. When you are your old, normal clothes, they say, oh, why is he wearing this every day? For them, if they wear new, nice clothes, then they would say, oh, mashallah. And we talked about that balance. You know, so you don't just focus on your clothing and how I look every day. No, no, no. At the same time, you don't become dirty and nasty and filthy. No. Islam is a religion of balance. So this hadith, for those of us, you know, life is tough on you. You know, and that statement is not correct. Because Allah is the one who makes things difficult to test you. And then Allah gives you sometimes to test you also. Focus on being a person of Allah. You could be better than all the billionaires put together. The next hadith he brought in this chapter, Imam al-Bukhari, he says, حدثنا الحميدي حدثنا سفيان حدثنا الأعمش قال سمعت أبا وائل أبو وائل شقيق he says قال عدنا خبابا فقال هاجرنا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نريد وجه الله خباب he said أبو وائل he narrates he says we visited خباب and we talked about خباب a few lessons ago خباب بن الأرت رضي الله عنه he says we visited Khabbab when he was sick. And Khabbab, who was a companion of the Prophet, وسلم, one of the first Muslims, he said, Hajarna Ma'an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nureed wajhallah. We migrated with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from where? Makkah going to Medina. He says we did that just to seek Allah's face, just to please Allah. Fawaqa ajruna ala Allah. And our reward was with Allah. فَمِنَّا مَنْ مَضَى There are some of us who died. لَمْ يَأْخُذْ مِنْ أَجْرِهِ They never took the worldly rewards. منهم from them مُسْعَبْ إِبْنُ عُمَيْر Is مُسْعَبْ إِبْنُ عُمَيْر قُتِلَ يَوْمَ أُحُدْ He was killed on the battle of Uhud. وَتَرَكَ نَمِرَةً And all he left behind was one sheet of cloth. فَإِذَا غَطَّيْنَا رَأْسَهُ When we used to cover him from the top of his head, بَدَتْ رِجْلَاهُ His legs would show. وَإِذَا غَطَّيْنَا رِجْلَيْهِ And when we covered him from the bottom, meaning his feet, بَدَتْ رَأْسَهُ or بَدَأْ رَأْسَهُ His head would show. It was not even big enough to cover his whole body. فَأَمَرَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَلَّمُ وَفَأَمَرَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَلَّمُ so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa told us to cover his head from meaning to cover his body from the top and to put to cover his feet the idkhir, the kind of ab or grass called idkhir and then Khabab said in some of us man aynaat lahu tamratuhu fahuwa yahdubuha and on the other hand some of us we have had the fruits of this world and we are still plucking them in this world. Khabbab ibn al-Arat, he says, anhu, we migrated with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We left the land of shirk and kufr and went to Medina to support the Messenger of Allah. And our reward was with Allah. And some of us, they died without getting the worldly pleasures before the Muslims won all the battles and life became easier for them. 
like Mus'ab bin Umair. And Mus'ab bin Umair, he died very young, in his 20s. In his 20s. Mus'ab, who used to be from a rich family, very rich. Mus'ab was only known in Mecca. He was only known by this one thing. The young man who used to wear expensive clothes and the best perfume. That's how they used to know him. When he became Muslim, his mother locked him up and took everything away and said, I will kill myself if you don't leave this religion. And he said, I'll never leave the religion. And they kicked him out. And people used to see him and say, this is the same Mus'ab that rich young man and when Allah allowed the Muslims to go to Medina because they were being tortured persecuted in Mecca when the people of Medina became Muslims the first person the Prophet وسلم, sent to them to teach them Islam was Musa bin Umar this young man imagine he was the first one who the Prophet وسلم, sent to them to teach them Islam And he taught him, he taught them Islam, and many people became Muslims through him. And he fought in the Battle of Badr uh, with the Prophet. The next year in the Battle of Uhud, he was killed. He was killed in this state. That same young man who used to be known in Makkah with the best clothes and the best perfume, they could not even find a cloth to cover his whole body. They could not find, he didn't have even one cloth which could cover his whole body. That's all he left in this world. Yet he's from the greatest Muslims. He's from the greatest Muslims. So Khabab, says, some of us, they did not get the rewards in this world. Like Musa bin Umair. And some of us, because Khabab, he lived. So some of us were getting the rewards. And he used to say this feeling sad, Khabbab al Arat, because they knew that those ones, they're better than them. <coughs> they used to view Mus'ab that he's better than all of them. The next hadith Imam al Bukhari, he mentions, he says, Haddathna Abu Walid, Haddathna Salm ibn Zarir. حدثنا أبو رجاء عن عمران بن حسين This hadith from Imran ibn Hussain رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم The rest from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said اتلعت في الجنة I looked into paradise فرأيت أكثر أهلها الفقراء And I saw that most, the majority of the people of paradise, Jannah are the weak people, the poor people وَتَلَعْتُ فِي النَّارِ And I was shown the hellfire فَرَأَيْتُ أَكْثَرَ أَهْلِهَا النِّسَاء And I saw majority of the people of the hellfire are the women. Majority of the people of the hellfire are the women. What does this hadith mean? Majority of the people of paradise are the weak, poor people. It's majority. It does not mean the rich people are going to the hellfire, no. But most of the people will be in Jannah. If you compare rich and poor people, it will be the poor people, weak people. <coughs> because the human being, like we say and we're saying again, it's easy to be distracted by the wealth. Only few people, those who really ask Allah to guide them, they don't get distracted by the wealth Allah gives them. But most people, I think all of us have seen that, we know that. Most people become distracted by the wealth Allah gives them. That is why they, and that is the chapter we read last, if I'm not wrong, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what? Al-Mukthiruna humul aqallun. Those who have a lot of wealth, they have less good deeds. Why? Because they're just busy with the wealth. They'll forget, except someone who uses that wealth in good. 
like the Prophet Sallallahu is saying, except if he uses that wealth in good. And that is why the Prophet Sallallahu is said, the poor people will enter Jannah before the rich people by how many years? Huh? 50? 500 years. Or 50 years, one of them. 50 is enough. The rich people are going to Jannah. The poor people are going to Jannah. Good Muslims. The poor ones will enter 50 years before the rich ones. Why? Because the rich ones have a lot to answer about. They have a lot to answer about. Again, it does not mean you say, I want to give up everything. No. If you're rich and you use it in good, Alhamdulillah. That is the best, in fact, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And the higher hand is better than the lower hand. The last chapter, as you read, last lesson. Wealth, let it be in your hand, as we say. Use it. Every cause which pleases Allah, use it. But if you keep it to count it, it will distract you. And you'll end up as a loser. <laughs> so the rich, they will enter Jannah before the poor. That is why most of the rich will end up in the hellfire. And most of the people of the Jannah, paradise, are the poor ones. On the other hand, most of the people of the hellfire are women. If you compare women to men, the people in the hellfire, most of them, will, there'll be more women than men in the hellfire. That's what it means. It doesn't mean all women are going to the hellfire, no. It means in the hellfire, there's more women than men. Majority is women. This hadith, it ended here, obviously. But if, of course, I know that most of you, if not all of you, know the continuation of that hadith. When the Prophet ﷺ said this, that woman, she stood up. Uh, in the hadith of Ibn Abbas, the Prophet Sallallahu he told the woman this during the day of Eid. He said, oh women, oh believing women, ya ma'ashar al-nisa, the saddaqna give in charity. Fa'inni ra'aytu kunna akthara ahl nar because I saw that women are the majority of the hellfire. Faqamat mra'atun jazla, so a woman, she stood up. Ibn Abbas says, and she had some, some dark spots on her cheek. Ibn Abbas describes her. And she said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, why are we most the most uh, of the people of the hellfire? And he said, What? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Your tongues, you curse a lot, you say bad things. And you do the kufr of the ashir, the husband, the spouse. The tongue and the kufr of the husband. She said, we kufr, disbelieve in Allah and his messenger? He said, no. Rather, you are ungrateful to the husband. If one of you, her husband, uh, did good for her all his life, and he did something wrong, you come and say to him, I've never seen you do any good for me. And you see, also that comes down to what? The tongue and not being grateful. That is one of the main reasons the women end up in the hellfire, not being grateful. Now, obviously, the hadith is very clear why Imam Bukhari put it under this chapter. This chapter says what? The excellence of being poor. What is the excellence of being poor? Most of the people of Jannah are the fuqara, the poor people. The next hadith will finish this chapter and then stop here for today. It says, Haddathana Abdul Warith, Haddathana Sa'id ibn Abi Aruba, an Qatada, an Anas radiallahu anhu qala. Anas radiallahu anhu says, Lam yakul al Nabi sallallahu ala sallam, ala khawa, ala khiwan in hatta mata, wa ma akala khubzan, murakkakan hatta mata. Anas radiallahu anhu says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not eat on a table all his life. He never sat on a table. And he never ate the thin, nice, baked bread. 
until he died. Sitting on a table is not haram. Nobody should understand that. But before, and even some of us in our societies, we view that sitting on a table is something um, high class. You know? The Prophet وسلم, that is what is intended here. He never ate on a table. Fancy dining, no. And he never ate nice, thinly backed wheat bread. No. Until he died. Why? Because he didn't have it. Not because he had, but he said no. He didn't have that. He ate whatever he had and that was enough. He ate whatever he had and that was enough. And the last hadith in this chapter, he says, Imam Bukhari, Haddathana Abdullah ibn Abi Shayba, Haddathana Abu Usama, Haddathana Hisham, An Abihi, An Aisha, the hadith of Aisha, radiallahu anha, who said, Laqad wufiya al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he died, who's saying this? Aisha, his wife, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا فِي رَفِّي مِنْ شَيْءٍ يَأْكُلُهُ ذُو كَبِدٍ إِلَّا شَطْرُ شَعِيرٍ فِي رَفٍ لِي فَأَكَلْتُ مِنْهُ حَتَّى طَالَ عَلَى عَلَيَّا فَكِلْتُهُ فَفَنِيَا She says, Aisha, when the Prophet ﷺ died, nothing which can be eaten by a living creature, not just human being, Nothing which can be eaten even by an animal was left on my shelf except some barley grain. I ate of it for a period of time and when I measured it, then I measured it and it finished. It was done. That is what he left behind, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the point here in the hadith of the words of Aisha is what? To show what, how much he left behind the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was he rich or poor? <coughs> was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rich or poor? I'm asking you. Huh? He was rich. <coughs> he was rich. Why was he rich? He was content. Why was he rich and all, the only thing he's leaving behind is what? some grain flour for his that's the house of Aisha why do we say he is rich because he just taught us what is yours is what you have given for Allah how much did the Prophet Sallallahu give no human being can give like how much he gave he used to give piles of gold piles he would give it all Do you understand? So he's rich with Allah. But us, in our definitions as human beings again, and I think today's lesson we have clarified, you know, those definitions. Who's the one who's rich? Not the one who has a lot of material things. It's the one who's content inside. Who's the one who's good? Someone we judge you say him? He's just a poor Muslim. No. He's rich with Allah. Because what he had, he gave. And what you give, you go and find it tomorrow with Allah. Now you are rich. Now you are rich. So, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us the people who are content. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us those who are satisfied with what He decrees for us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the best of this dunya and the akhirah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what the Prophet sallallahu used to ask him when he used to say, وَلَا تَجْعَلِ الدُّنْيَا أَكْبَرَ هَمِّنَا Do not make this life of the world our main concern. Let our main concern be to please Allah. Our main concern should be to please Allah. We'll stop here for today. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik
we'll stop here today we'll um, take a break we're not coming back after the break unlike normal friday and wednesday you don't need to record that um sunday as usual 6 p.m question and answers now from today inshallah we'll be here permanent so you can tell your friends and your family i know it took, it took you months uh, to convince me ashraf and and nasir and sheikh the sheikh is not here he's sick we'll be here permanently every friday and sunday inshallah as for now the wednesday class is stopped as for now we'll restart again soon but as for now it is stopped the one is the class but we'll be here every friday and sunday friday as you know 7 pm and from next week we'll restart the authentic seerah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we all love the prophet i know that we claim we love the prophet all of us claim but how much do you know of his life I ask myself that. That is why, well, alhamdulillah, for the last two years, the thing I've been focusing on most is to study the seerah of the greatest human being. Because I ask myself, if someone stopped me and asked me, what happened in the fourth year after Hijrah, after I went to Medina? Can you answer that question? Isn't it a shame, though? That that is the man we claim we love and we follow. We don't know his life. And knowing his life is knowing what Allah wants from you. You know, so I started the Sira series. I don't know now, maybe a year ago. We stopped for a long time, very long time. Actually, we stopped during Ramadan. And we just did like seven lectures. So we'll continue from next Friday, 7 p.m. here. I think we reached... Um, now the Prophet ﷺ is calling openly in Mecca. The da'wah is starting. That's where we reached. Yes, and of course, we'll be doing the seerah from 7 up to like 8.30. From 8.30, we read our normal um, book of heart softness. We read some hadith from Sahih al-Bukhar. Because like you say, this is good. Like I mentioned in the beginning, this hadith, especially this book of heart softness, it takes away from just thinking dunya, dunya, dunya every day, you know. And on Sunday's question and answers, as you know, Saturday or Sunday morning, we didn't decide with the sheikh yet. We'll start after Fajr also. After Fajr, inshallah. It's not decided yet whether I'm going to do Saturday or Sunday. Don't tell me to do both days. Because the sheikh is doing Sundays right now. Sheikh in Amullah. But we talked and maybe we will switch. Maybe we will switch. But we're starting next week. We're starting next week. For those of you who came for Salah, we are sorry to delay you. But this is one thing I like about this masjid. Nobody stands up and starts to shout, you know. Because it's not a, a masjid of begging donations every day. Those masjids where they beg donations every day, everybody's the honor, you know. Anybody can come in and shout at the imam pray and don't make it long by the way <laughs> you know it's one thing i love about the brothers here alhamdulillah may allah keep it like this and make it better jazakum allah khairan barakallah fikum wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah sorry wala you discuss with the sheikh the imam you know if he was going to announce that every friday and uh every friday specifically that isha is going to be delayed so people know that you know some people just want to come for salah if you pray at eight on friday it will be good so we have at least one hour seven to eight or praying at seven which is a bit early so we pray Isha and then we start there. It's better if you pray at 8, yeah. right? It's for you to decide. And time is going up, yes. We're going to February, March. Time is going up.
اوكي ان شاء الله